Hey all, Blake here with another video. And today I want to talk about five awesome live foods that you can culture in your fish room. Let's jump straight into the video. So before we get started, we might want to talk about why would you bother culturing live foods? Why, why would you put in the effort when there's such a variety and there's so many different types of awesome pre-prepared foods that you can get these days? Well, first of all, my belief is that live foods condition the fish a lot better. I think that uh, newborn fry automatically take to live foods where sometimes they don't have the instinct to Im Im immediately go for some prepared or powderized foods. So I think that uh, raising up of the fry you'll have a lot more success with live foods and getting to the point of laying eggs you'll have a lot more success conditioning the adults. Overall, I find that coloration, condition and health is improved with live foods and it's also pretty fun to see a fish uh, exhibit its natural behaviors hunting down some prey. So with all of that in mind, let's talk about five cultures that we can do with minimal effort and fairly easy uh, regular maintenance. So we're going to count down from five to one today. We're going to go from fifth to the best. So to get started, let's talk about Infusoria. So infusory is something that a lot of us probably already have within our aquariums, but to culture it, we're going to basically allow those little critters and bugs to survive until a, a greater population or a larger size exists. So what we want to do is take the infusory that is already in our fish tanks and combine that with some vegetable material. So to do that, first of all, I start at the stove, fill a pot with some water, dechlorinated if possible. If you've got chlorine, then you don't have to worry because boiling will remove that during the process. Put in some broccoli, peas, any sort of greens. Um, cabbage is also a good one. Put just some green vegetable material in there and boil it for a period of time. Once it's boiled, just turn the heat off and let it sit there and get back down to room temperature. At that point, you want to combine the water and some of the blanched vegetables um, with some aquarium water and just sit it uh, on a windowsill or somewhere that's going to get sort of heat and light. After a few weeks, you'll notice that the water will go cloudy as bacteria basically grows within that environment and then it'll clear up again. You'll start to see little copepods and things hopping around. To harvest, you get yourself a turkey baster, take some of that and put it in with your newborn fry. This is great because infusor is one of the smallest foods that you can get and some fry actually require it to survive. So uh, infusor, really fairly effortless, fairly easy to maintain and uh, once you get going, you'll know what to do. Number four on the list is mosquito larvae. And that's number four because you, there is a bit of seasonality to it. Uh, the best time to do this is around the summertime where you've got hotter days. And to culture mosquito larvae, it's as simple as getting a bucket of dechlorinated water. I like to put some organic material in there, some Indian almond leaves, maybe some fish food or something like that to just murky up the water a little bit leave it outside and mosquitoes will find it and will breed in it. So what you need to look for after giving it sort of a week or two is some things that will have a, like a jerky sort of movement. Um, and those are going to be the baby mosquitoes. So obviously if you leave the bucket too long, you'll be culturing mosquitoes and your neighbors might not be too thrilled with that. Also, you got to check the legality in your area because some places uh, severely discourage culturing mosquito larvae for that reason. However, they can be a fantastic uh, food for baby fish and also adult nano fish. Also, some of the pickier fish like gouramis and puffers may not actually uh, go for pre-prepared foods and mosquito larvae might be the easiest bet that you got. So, mosquito larvae, fairly nutritious, easy to culture, doesn't cost anything, the, just make sure you don't get mosquitoes everywhere. <laughs> Number three on the list is a great first food. There is some preparation involved in that one, it's microworms. To culture microworms, you wanna get some sort of carbohydrate. I like using wheat bix or other cereals. Oats is also a good one, and I've heard a lot of people using bread. What you wanna do is mix it up with some warm water and some yeast, and um, you'll have to get a starter microworm culture. Starter microworm cultures are easily found at reputable local fish stores upon request. 
You can also often find them on eBay, Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace and those sorts of things. Other than that, just get chatting with people in your local fish clubs and things like that. You'll find somebody culturing microworms and they can be a great uh, first food for fish. I like microworms for things like epistogramas, corridories and other bottom dwellers because microworms actually sink down to the bottom and they will bunch up. So it's best fed to bottom dwellers actually. Um, the downside is that you have to maintain the microworm uh, culture where you'll have to probably replace it every 30 days. Once the um, medium gets a bit black and liquidy, that's when it's time to replace it. The good thing is that the medium is fairly forgiving, so I've often let it go way further than it needs to go and uh, once it's come time that I need microworms again, I make up a fresh batch of the cereal yeast combination and then I'll just put some of this gross black liquid in there. Eventually the microworms come back, so um, I have found them to be resilient in that respect. Other than that, microworms are really great first foods for um, very small fish, but not the smallest fish. And that is why I've decided number two on my list is going to be vinegar eels. Vinegar eels I really love because the culture is super easy to maintain. All it requires is getting a starter culture of vinegar eels, some apple cider vinegar and some apples. And you can keep this in the dark in your fish room for years on end. Basically you get the apple cider vinegar, open it up, put a few slices of apple in there and your, your vinegar eel culture. At that point you have a vinegar eel culture and you can allow the population to build up, divide the culture, divide up many times, start selling the cultures, or you can begin to feed out of it. To feed out your vinegar eel culture, I use a bottle with a skinny neck and then we put the vinegar mixture there with the eels in the bottom. I like to put some coarse sponge because it just holds its place better in the neck. You have some fine filter floss and then you put aquarium water on the top. The eels will go up to the top for oxygen, at which point you can get a turkey baster or a pipette and take out the aquarium water. The reason for this filter floss and core sponge is to make sure that the aquarium water doesn't mix in with the vinegar. So you can easily uh, feed out uh, aquarium water and vinegar eels, exactly what you want to separate them out of the vinegar. They do it all themselves and they're fantastic. The other great things I love about vinegar eels is that they float, they go to the top of the water column where things like rainbow fish, bedders and other top dwelling fish, uh, the fry hang out. Guppies are another one of those and there's plenty more other examples. They'll survive for quite a while in aquarium water so they're not going to foul up the water too quickly and they're super tiny so most fish fry will be able to take vinegar eels on the first feeding so that's a really good thing to have around if you want to breed fish that notoriously have small babies, things like tetras, rainbow fish, and other uh, fish along those lines. Now vinegar eels are great, but there was never any chance that they were gonna top the best fish food there is, in my opinion, and that is baby brine shrimp. Baby brine shrimp is slightly more work to uh, hatch out, but I think it's definitely worthwhile. I've got videos on how to make DIY uh, hatcheries for baby brine shrimp, and what it involves is basically an apparatus that holds water. You're going to need to put, get air in there and get the surface bubbling away. Then you put in your brine shrimp eggs and your salt and create a brine mixture. Uh, after a day, they'll probably hatch generally 24 to 36 hours, depending on the heat. And the heat is provided by a light bulb that you keep nearby the hatchery and leave it on 24 seven. What you will find is that once you turn the water off in that 24 to 36 hour period, you'll have a lot of little things hopping around inside the water and those are gonna be baby brine shrimp. Typically people's first introduction to brine shrimp was as the toy or the um, first pet of sea monkeys. So that's what we're thinking about here. Baby brine shrimp are way smaller than that though and they hop, go all over the aquarium. It is important to note that they are photosensitive, so they will swim towards a light source, which is good to know. So uh, once again, if your light is at the top of your aquarium, they'll generally swim towards the top. So I like to feed baby brine shrimp directly before the lights come on so that they spread all over the aquarium and uh, more evenly disperse. Overall, in terms of nutrients, there's m not many rivals that are as good as baby brine shrimp. And, um, it's just relatively easy once you get it up and going. Would definitely recommend hatching out at least baby brine shrimp, but if not, 
all of these live foods, I think you'll find that you'll have vastly improved uh, reproduction and success rate raising fry and overall your fish will be thankful for it. If you've got any questions, pop them down below, I'll try and answer them. I've got videos on a lot of these things, hopefully some cards popped up while we were going through here. Hopefully you liked the video, if you did it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.